Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we worship you. King of glory, we bless your holy name. Lord, we can do this all day because what you did for us on the cross of Calvary is major. Father, we thank you for redeeming our souls. We thank you for the salvation of our souls. We thank you for the access to power. We thank you, oh God, for dominion you have given us over principalities, powers, and rulers in the heavenly places. We thank you for the constant battles you fight on our behalf, oh God. Even those ones that we cannot see. We thank you for your resurrection power because you are the life. Father, we thank you because you are the life. Father, we thank you because you are the way, the truth, and the life. Thank you, oh God, for giving us your precious son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, oh God, for giving us your precious son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father. Lord, as we go into your word this morning, everlasting rock of ages, I ask that God Almighty, we shall not hear words, words, oh God, but Lord, we shall hear, we shall activate. Your words shall be activated by your power in Jesus' mighty name. Your words that will come forth this morning will set the captives free. So your words that will come forth this morning will be spirit and will be light in Jesus' mighty name. Meet us all at the point of our needs, O oh God. And do not let us return to our homes the same way we have come in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Before we are seated, good morning, church, and happy Easter. Before we take our seats, I'd like you to turn to your neighbors on the left, right, back, front, and welcome them to church. And I should tell them, welcome them to church. Tell them they are looking good this morning. Everybody is looking sharp. <laughs> You're looking sharp. <laughs> Welcome to church. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Please take us, take your seats in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right. So the title, it's Easter Sunday, and of course, the title of the message is revolved around resurrection. And the title is Accessing the power of resurrection. Accessing the power of resurrection. I have some slides. Okay. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I'll just improvise. Um, amen. So, accessing the power of resurrection. Amen. <laughs> Sorry, Sola, I'm trying to be like you now. <laughs> so, um, before we get started... Um, Let's take a quick look at what Jesus has done and think about it as Christians. What would our lives be without Jesus dying on the cross and resurrecting? Let's even say he died and he never resurrected. What do you think would have happened to us? Because gosh, go, I, I tell you, between you and I, the last, um, the last few days before he got nailed to the cross and he was condemned was not particularly easy for him. He asked, Father, if this was possible, take this cup away from me. It was hard. He was, he was discouraged. It was a heavy load that he had to bear. Dying on the cross, he was whipped, he was despised, he was spat upon, he was, you know, also, he probably didn't even know where this was going to end. You know, like, he probably did not know, but he did the will of God. And thank Jesus, he obeyed till the end. Because, I mean, like, Jesus did a lot of things. He demonstrated God's power in different ways. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He, um, what, he healed the woman with the issue of blood. He cast out demons. But did you know that the major part of Jesus' um, mission to earth was to die on the cross? And the devil tried from the time he was born to stop that. That was the crux of his mission to, the, to, to earth, to die and to rise up from the dead. Because no, the power of God to Christians will not, be active, will not have been activated without the death and resurrection of Jesus. So when we are celebrating Easter, it's a huge thing. It's a huge thing. And why? Why Easter? Why did Jesus have to die? Why did he have to go through all that? Why did, he have to, why did he need to resurrect? Why did he need to resurrect? Of course, we know that there's, we always sing the song, power in the resurrection, power in the blood of Jesus. But it goes beyond the songs we sing. It goes beyond the act itself. Now, let's think about our environment this, in this day and age. Um, as Christians, as salvation, 
our work with God, our work for God, cannot be successfully accomplished without keying into the power of resurrection. So this is just like um, giving a background of why we need to activate, as Christians, we need to understand the power of resurrection, walk and walk in the power of resurrection. Let's think about the environment we live in in these days. We are living in critically dark times. How many of you agree with me? We are living in critically dark times. People are using their loved ones for rituals. If you are from a part of the world, the, the rate of ritual killings, I, I happen to be on Instagram, not because of anything, not because I want to um, check out Slay Mamas. I, <laughs> I want to know what's going on, you know, because I still have loved ones back home. The rate of ritual killings and kidnap has, has gone astronomically high, as in even people that claim to be your loved ones, if you're not careful, would we'll kidnap or even use, like, it's just like the order of the day. It's like drinking water. Ritual killings is like, head in the last one month, I've heard not one, not two stories of young girls that their body parts were harvested. I'm, not, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to gross you out, but it's just trying to reflect on the reality of the times we're living in. How about... Well, in the civilized world we live in these days, men have become lovers of themselves. They don't care about what happens to their next door neighbor. It's become a dog-eat-dog -dog life. Look at what's happening in Russia and Ukraine. People are being bombed to death at train stations. So the level of wickedness has, is on the rise. And would it get better? I don't think so. It's not going to get better because of the times we're living in. Whether we like it or not, as Christians, we need to become, begin to awaken to the fact that we're living in the end times. Wickedness will be on the rise. But as Christians, how do we navigate? How do we stay focused? How do we operate in this kind of environment? There's in, in computer science, there's something they call the operating system. Without the operating system, the com computer does not have its functionality. So we need an operating system to function in this kind of environment, and it's only access to the power of resurrection. I tell you, and this is not to scare you, as Christians, if you're living without accessing, it's one thing to be saved, and it's another thing. It's another thing to, sorry. It's another thing to walk in power. And God's purpose for us is not just to be saved. Yes, that's part of the work of, um, that's part of the benefits of the resurrection. But also beyond that, take dominion. When he created Adam, he said, go in, well, he said, multiply and take dominion. That was the instruction he gave. When Jesus, um, Jesus was going to leave, when he ascended into heaven, go into the world and preach the gospel, take dominion. So God's purpose for us is to take dominion. And how do we do that? More than ever before, we need to key into God's power because of the kind of times we're living in. More than ever before, we need to tap key into God's power in our walk with God like we've never done before. Now, we're going to go on. What are the implications of Christ's resurrection to us as believers? Of course, we're all familiar with salvation um, can we scroll on to the fifth slide, please, so everybody can see? Fifth slide. No, um, right before that. So this is the crux of the message today. We're going to be reading scriptures. The implications of Christ's resurrection, what are they? We've got salvation, of course, dominion and authority over principalities and powers. We, can't be, we cannot av avoid that. Um, I mean, like, COVID had happened, since COVID happened, I don't know about this part of the world, but even in Nigeria, people under 40s, over 40s, are just dropping dead. And this, you know, I, I recently lost my younger sister, and um, I, he, she also happened to have lost her husband seven months before. So, you know, things are happening, even in, even to Christians, and Things are happening, and um, 
So it, it's just a reflection of the kind of world we're currently living in. And I have, in the past few weeks since all of these incidents, I have come to the realization of the fact that if you're a Christian and you do not access the power of God, the power of God's um, resur Christ's resurrection, the devil will make a means meet of you. You, 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 you cannot um, be lukewarm. You cannot afford to be lukewarm. We cannot afford to be lukewarm in these days. We cannot afford to deprive ourselves of tapping into that power. The power is available, but there's a level of knowledge that is required, the level of seeking that is required to access this power. But it's now on us. The court, but ball is in our court. Are we ready? Are we ready? Would we rather live a mundane Christian life and, uh, and be tossed to and fro by the, by the happenings of life? Or would we choose to access that power and live above and take dominion and fulfill God's purpose for our lives? It's, it's our choice. It's a choice we have to decide to make. Now, the first scripture, first set of scripture is related to salvation. Let's even understand the foundation of the first, the first thing we need to do to access this power. Be saved. Ephesians 2, 1 to 10. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. If we're able to project it, please go ahead. Oh, there it is. Let's read together. It's a long scripture, but let's read together. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespass and sins, wherein time passed you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and where by nature the children of wrath are even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great law, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace we are saved, and hath raised us up, by, up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath foreordained that we should walk in them. Hallelujah. So salvation, our salvation is a gift. Our salvation is a gift. And we were not saved just to sit pretty in church. We were saved to become workmen, workmen for God. We were saved to live in authority with Christ Jesus. He says, above, to live and reign with Christ Jesus. And we should always remember this, that it's not our works, it's faith, it is the grace of God that, that, that caused us to be saved. And once in a while, from time to time, we need to re-evaluate the status of our salvation because a lot of things happen. A lot of things happen. Sometimes we need to compromise, sometimes we, we bend to, you know, the storms of life. Things happen. But from time to time, we need to continuously access that salvation, access that level of authority that we need to dwell. So we, are, we take dominion. Now let's move on to the next, second implication of Christ's resurrection, which is dominion. Which is dominion. We're going to be taking some prayer points after this. Um, dominion. Why does God want us to, to dominate? Why does God want us to to, 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 um, to have authority on the face of the earth, to do his work. Philippians 3, 8 to, 8 to 10. Philippians 3, 8 to 10. Let, one, so let's go, let's read together. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things for loss 
for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Now this is the crux of the scripture, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, be made comfortable unto his death. The highlight there is that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. So there was, he talked about his salvation in the previous verses. He talked about Paul. This was Paul the Apostle. Paul the Apostle was not um, in quotes like the fishermen that Jesus walked with. He was a knowledgeable, he was not, he had the knowledge of the word. But he was raised in the church. He was baptized as a child. So, you know, all the, you know, the paraphernalias of being um, a godly person, a righteous person, he had. My father was, a, his father was probably a pastor. His mother was probably a deaconess. You know, like, he had all the titles. But he said, he counted them as nothing. All those titles were nothing. But all that mattered to him was knowing Christ. Was knowing Christ. So it was one thing to be saved. It's one thing to be saved. It's one thing to come to church every Sunday and But it's another thing to know Christ. There's a deeper level. And the reason he's accessing that, the reason he's interested in in that is so that he can access the power of his resurrection. Paul went through a whole lot of things. He went through the fire. He was beaten by snakes. He did not die. That is level. And even at the level he was as, as, as as an apostle, he still craved for more. There are levels in Christ. I mean, like, let's take Jesus for example. He raised the dead. He did this. He did that. But did you know that going to the cross, cross, being able to cross, go to the cross to die and resurrect was another level. It was not the same Jesus that was baptized by John the Baptist that went to the cross. It was... He, he was able to do what he did because he constantly sought the face of a father. He constantly learned about him. Have you prayed till you started dripping blood? Those are levels. And these are levels. This is not just to boast of our, of our Lord Jesus Christ and the capabilities he had. It is to understand the things the place, is, the place we need to be as Christians to be able to access the power of resurrection. It is to understand the place we need to be as Christians to walk according to the purpose God has given unto us. Now, he says in his word that, that um, um, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all other things will be added unto you. Like my people will say, the crux, the cocoa of the matter is fulfilling God's purpose here on earth. And we cannot do that without accessing the power of resurrection. We, and we can only access the power of resurrection by knowing, knowing, knowing every day, knowing. I just want to be where you are, dwelling daily in your presence I don't want to worship from afar draw me near to where you are I want to be where you are dwelling in your presence Fisting at your table, surrounded by your glory, in your presence. That's where I'll always want to be. I just want to 
be our prayers this morning because there is no other place there is no power anywhere else there is no salvation anywhere else there is no fulfillment anywhere else but in the presence of God now the reality is things happen we have to be real things happen we have jobs we have children we have this but I mean let us seize this time, this um, time of this day of resurrection to reset our priorities, friends, to reset our priorities. Because you know what? There are, the devil uses all sorts of devices to get us away from that place we should be. He uses busyness, which is very, very predominant in this part of the world. Busyness, hustling. I'm not saying don't work for a living, work for a living, but know the fact that the most important thing is seeking the first the kingdom of God because that's where you get access to power. Now, you may ask yourself, I have been asking this question, why is there, why is a church devoid of power? Because whether we like it or not, when I was growing, you know, during the times of the Scriptures Union, SU, Ha, Jim Jim Christians, People that will pray for hours and things will happen. But where is that? Where has that all gone to? The Christians are... But that's why terrorists in Nigeria are just kidnapping kids. Kidnapping... They will even come to church and kidnap pastors if we're not careful. They, they, they've, they've, they're not having a, a field time because Christians are sleeping. Christians are sleeping. A lot of Christians were in Ukraine. Ukraine is a free state that, that you know, they, 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 after the Cold War, they detached and parted ways with Russia, which is why Russia wants to take them back. It's a free state. People are able to actually worship and serve God as opposed to living in Russia. All of that went ablaze. We need to wake up. This is a wake-up call. While we celebrate Easter, let us not forget the purpose. Let us not forget our purpose as children of God. Let us not forget seeking the face of God. Let us not forget accessing that power to be able to live in dominion. Now, the final reason, the final implication of Christ's resurrection is reinvigoration. Because... For Jesus to have gone to the cross, he needed stamina. Look at all he went through. For us to do what we are called to do, for us to remain and abide in God in spite of all the crazies that's going on around us, we need stamina. I need stamina. I don't know about you. Maybe you are incredible hawk or you're yeah, like, brother, don't take care. You know, the six packs and the... Huh. I need stamina, and not just physical stamina. I need spiritual stamina to pray, to pray the presence of God down. So we need a reinvigoration. Romans 8, verse 11. Let's go ahead and read. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So everything we need has been made available. We only need to know and then tap into it. But you know what the devil does? Keeps us from even knowing 
And how do we know? Studying the word, spending time with God. But by the time you are so busy, you know, too busy, not making it a priority, make it a priority first. Like Pastor will say, set your timers for whatever it is that is, that is important. You know, set your timers. Because sometimes I reflect, okay, I know what I do to get my kids ready. And they have to get to school. And they are always on time to get to school. So why, why on Sundays do, do, do I, I'm talking to myself, it's me now, and I'm being on. Why do I slack on Sundays? I understand. It's, it's a lot. But make it priority. We have to make God priority. We just have to. It's, it's, a, it's not just for him. It's not even for him. It's for us. We have to. We have to. So he, through the power of resurrection, he's able to give us that stamina. That stamina to do what we're supposed to do. Spiritual and physical stamina. Because you might be Jim Jim spiritually, but if your body is tired, I tell you, you will not wake up in the time, the times the Holy Spirit wakes you up to pray. Because your body is tired. So we need that reinvigoration. And if you cannot pray, that's your access to power. That's one of the, the pathways to, to tap in power from God. Prayers. I, I, I am constantly waking up at 12, 3. And sometimes I wake up and I'm like, I just back up because I've had a long day. My body's tired. But I want that reinvigoration. I need it. We all need it. We all need it because the, the less we pray, our purpose is cut short. The more, the more, um, far, the farther away we are from our purpose, the farther we are away from tapping into that power, and we should not be ignorant of those devices. He's come, his major assignment is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Before he gets to destruction, he steals first. He's stealing your time for prayers. He's stealing this and that. He starts, you know, he starts small without you noticing. Then he begins to kill. He begins to kill, and then, of course, then that's it. But that will not be our portion in Jesus' name. The power of resurrection, will, the power of our, the resurrection we celebrate today will reinvigorate us, will give us access to the power, all the power we need to work in God's purpose in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. As we round up, as we round up the final words, while we celebrate another Easter, let us Seize the opportunity and consider, be mindful of the times we live in. Let us have an understanding, like the sons of Issachar, of the times we live in. Let us reset our priorities as children of God. Believe you me, all these other things we're chasing, God wants to give us beyond how, beyond what, how much, we, how badly we want it. He wants it for us much more than we want it. I mean, like if our lives are comfortable, then it's easier to serve God, right? But we should make sure that um, his topmost priority and um, the end is near, friends. We should never forget that. We should always remember that the times are precarious because the end is near. Um, before we go ahead to take prayer points, I would like to seize this opportunity to make an altar call. Perhaps you are here. The, we we, we previ um, initially found out, we initially learned that salvation is key. Without salvation, we cannot access the Father. Without salvation, we cannot even begin to talk about dominion and being reinvigorated. So we need to, um, for the, if you're here, you don't have to um, shout out to anyone and nobody does, anybody doesn't have to see you, but in your heart of hearts, you know. Or maybe we're here as Christians. We need to rededicate our lives to Christ. Let us take a few minutes to go before God and ask for a fresh power, the fresh release of his power of salvation upon our lives. Let's ask, oh God, I hit for a fresh breath of his anointing. Father Lord, we ask, oh God, for everyone gathered here today whose heart is not aligned with you, Lord, ask in the mighty name of Jesus that you touch their hearts reunite their hearts to you, O oh Lord. Perhaps, O oh God, they, their hearts had been reunited with you once, but um, the cares of this world has taken them far away from you. Lord, I ask you bring them back to you, O oh God. Save our souls, O oh God. Save our souls, O oh God. 
Lord, renew our spirits within us. Renew a right spirit within us, Lord. And create in us a clean, clean heart, so Lord, in Jesus' name. We do not boast of our strength. We do not boast of our, our, our selves, of our righteousness. But Lord, we boast in knowing you, O oh God. We take our boast in the faith, in our faith in Christ Jesus. Because it's the way, the truth, and the life. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. All right, so I would like to implore us at this time to rise as a church. We're going to take three prayer points now that we've heard the word. How am I doing with time, Lord Bishop? We're good? Okay, all right. The first prayer point will be to ask God for a renewed and deeper understanding of Christ. A renewed and deeper understanding of Christ, just like Paul had asked. And Lord, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Father, take me deeper to the level, a new level in you, O oh God. Give me a deeper understanding of you, of your workings, O oh God. Help me to make you topmost priority in my life, O oh God. Father, Lord, I take authority over the spirit of busyness, O oh God. The spirit of busyness, O oh God. Father, I take authority over, O oh God. Help me to keep you first, to seek you first. To seek you first, O oh God. To seek you first, O oh God. And seek your righteousness first. To seek your kingdom first. To seek your righteousness first, O oh God. Father, Lord, give us, take us deeper into that level. To that level where we access the power of your resurrection in Jesus' name. That nothing will matter but Christ in our lives, O oh God. Nothing will matter but Christ in our lives, O oh God. Father, we worship you. Thank you, O oh God Almighty, for everyone gathered here today, O oh God. Thank you for a new level of revelation, revelation knowledge of you that will take them, O oh God, to that place where they're supposed to be in Jesus' mighty name. Father, Lord, help us to seek you like Jesus sought you, O oh God. Help us to pant after you like David panted after you, O oh God. How because... They were able to overcome because they sought you, O oh God, and they, they, they walked in the authority, O oh God, and knowledge of you. Father, we worship you. Pray for everyone watching online right now, O oh God. Father, Lord, grant them that access to that deep knowledge of you, deep understanding of you, O oh God that they will be able to access the power of resurrection, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, my shake de de kasente de baba, my shake de de kastanda. Oh, my standa yeke seke de de kashete de kasteke de. Oh, Father, we pray for our city, the city of God as a church. Let the children know you, O oh God. Let the children know you deeper, O oh God. Let the adults know you deeper, O oh God. Let the youth, O oh Lord, know you deeper, O oh God. Let the leadership, O oh God, know you deeper, O oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let our love for you be renewed, O oh God. Let our desire for your presence be renewed, O oh God. Even as we celebrate the resurrection, to your, your resurrection today in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let's pray that from today, as we celebrate the resurrection of Christ, we will experience the mighty power that raised Christ from the dead in different dimensions in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, as we celebrate your resurrection, we will experience your mighty power that raised Christ from the dead like never before in Jesus' mighty name. As we celebrate your resurrection, we will experience the mighty power that raised Christ from the dead like never before in Jesus' mighty name. Let the power, O oh God, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, O oh God, quicken our mortal bodies in Jesus' name. Destroy every works of darkness manifesting in our lives in Jesus' mighty name. Destroy every hindrance to us accessing your power in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we ask, O oh God, that the mighty power of our Lord Jesus Christ will quicken our mortal bodies in Jesus' mighty name. Mash de kede de kasanta ye baba mash sheke de de baba ye te de baba mash sheke de de kashete de baba mash de kede de kasata 
Maste baba masheke de de kaste ke de de kaste ke de de baba maste te. Mashi baba maste ke de de kaste de de bobo maste ke de de kashanta. Let your anointing break every yoke that would hinder us from tapping into your power in Jesus' name. Let your, let, let your anointing begin to destroy every yoke that hinders us, that would hinder us from tapping into that, accessing that power of resurrection in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Final prayer point. Lord, quicken my mortal body. Reinvigorate my, me, revive my spirit, soul, and body to, do, to fulfill your purpose. Father, Lord, quicken my mortal body. Revive my spirit, O oh God. Reinvigorate my body, O oh God. Father, Lord, quicken me, O oh God, spirit, soul, and body to fulfill your purpose, for, to fulfill the purpose you have created me for in the name of Jesus. Lord, revive my spirit, soul, and body, O oh God. Lord, quicken my mortal body, O oh God. Quicken my spirit, quicken my soul, quicken my, quicken my body, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, O oh God, quicken my mortal body. Quicken every, the mortal body of, more bodies of everyone gathered here and watching online, O oh God. Father, that we will be awakened to your purpose for our lives, O oh God. That we will be awakened, O oh God, to your purpose for our lives, O oh God. That we will not be caught up, O oh God, in mundane things, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let your anointing destroy every yoke, O oh God. Let your anointing destroy every yoke that stands as a hindrance to us, O oh God, walking according to your purpose for our lives in Jesus' name. Oh, shentere baba mastekedere kashata ya baba mashekede. Oh, santa ya baba mashekedere kastendere kastanta. Oh, santa ya baba mashekedere kastanta ya baba mashekede. Oh, standa ya katara ya baba mashekedere kastekedere kashete. Oh, Santa Ye Baba Masheke Dere Kaste Dere. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Before we close, we'll take the song. Anointing. All on me. Anointing.
everlasting rock of ages. We thank you. Thank you, God, for another resurrection day, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for your children, oh God. Thank you for the cries of their heart, oh God. Thank you, oh God, that even as they have cried, oh God, for another touch, a renewed touch, a reinvigoration of strength, oh God. Father, in the name of Jesus, meet them at the point of their needs, oh God. Father, let there be an outpouring of your spirit, oh God, upon every flesh gathered here and watching online, oh God. Let everyone gathered here today and watching online never remain the same again, oh God. Father God, I pray that you will fill us with your Holy Ghost and power, oh God. That we will walk in dominion, oh God. We will walk according to your purpose for our lives in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we take authority and we bind, oh God, every hold, every satanic hold upon our lives, limiting us from being all that you have cost us and fulfilled us, called us to be. Father, we take authority over them right now in Jesus' name. You are the yoke breaker. Lord, break every satanic yoke, oh God, holding us back from being all, from being all that you have purposed us to be, oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, Lord, we take authority authority over the spirit of prayerlessness. We take authority over the spirit of busyness. We take authority over the, every bad habit, oh God, that withholds us, oh God, from fulfilling our purpose here on earth, oh God. We take authority over them right now in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, we pray for a release of everyone gathered here into purpose, into power in Jesus' mighty name. Father, Lord, thank you for your touch. Thank, thank you, you for your touch. Thank you, thank you, oh God, that our lives shall never remain the same way again Amen. in Jesus' name. Our study of your word will not remain the same again in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, oh God, for access to a deeper knowledge of you in Jesus' name. Thank you for access to the power of your resurrection in Jesus' name. We worship and exalt you, oh Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen.